Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and this will be a review of the premiere episode of The Flash Season 8. Now this episode also serves as the opening episode of the five part crossover Armageddon, all parts of which will take place only on The Flash show itself. Now there will be spoilers throughout this review so just in case you haven't yet caught up with all of the episodes from previous seasons. Now just to quickly recap, at the end of Season 7 we saw the end of the Godspeed War where briefly Barry had teamed up with Fawn in order to take out Godspeed. Barry and Iris had reviewed their fouls and Kramer had to reveal to Joe that she actually had meta powers. Now this crossover itself takes place six months after season seven. Now overall in terms of the episode I thought it was okay. It was one of those episodes that for me really felt more like a typical Flash episode rather than a season opener or indeed a crossover opener. It kind of felt a bit underwhelming in terms of the overall action and spectacle that was involved the episode itself flowed fine. I think it had good character moments. There was good chemistry between all of the cast involved in this episode. It did have a light and very brisk tone about it, but it didn't really feel like you were watching a huge installment of a big crossover event. There were times when I wondered whether there were certain limitations in terms of the budget. Of course, there would have been certain complications from COVID, of course. But this episode just didn't feel like you were really hoped up it just didn't have that real intense excitement that we've seen from previous crossover events now we'll just go over quickly of some of the standout elements of this particular episode so it began when we fast forwarded to 2031 in central city where we saw basically the city was in complete chaos and we got some early narration from despero essentially establishing that the flash was responsible for the whole city being in turmoil so he was going to travel back in time to eventually stop barry preventing this disaster in the future and we go forward to the present day where we catch up with Barry and Caitlin who's very much settled now we saw Killer Frost has departed following her recent tribulations in season seven she's in a relationship of course and now Caitlin decides that she wants to date again we saw Iris who has now established her media company called the Central City Citizen Media and it's expanded very much so we see her now she's got her own building she's got her own group of employees so I think this was a good job of just establishing again that Iris is back in that journalism type of employment. I think that's what's served the character best overall. And hopefully they can find a way to make Iris far more integral to the overall story. We had a subplot where we see Allegra, who's also working for her, who had to basically find a connection between the current employees in terms of what stories they publish. So they were trying to make Allegra far more involved in the story. I didn't really get that. She's a character who I don't really mind. I don't hate the character, but I don't really feel... The need for her overall importance within the show i've commented on many videos concerning the flash that i believe that there are too many heroes and allegra has always been a character that i feel you could really admit for the show and it wouldn't be any negative effect we also saw the return of ray palmer who we also know from the arrow and legends of tomorrow of course he arrives at barry's place because he's got to attend this tech con event and he couldn't find a hotel room and i think it's always a pleasure to see brandon ralph returning in the role i think it was very controversial how he basically was departed from the legends of tomorrow series you can check out his interviews with michael rosenbaum's inside of you series to get more details on that and i just felt it was very disappointing how they handled that he was essentially you know he's been attached to the arrowverse for so long in both arrows and legends of tomorrow so i think this is maybe some sort of way to make an atonement for that departure from the show so i think he's very good in role and as i mentioned at the start of this video he had good interplay particularly with both barry and chester throughout this episode itself they were building him very much more of this almost like this legendary celebrity and chester had a very much of a connection to him we had another subplot where we saw the entry of the royal flush gang this is very much taking inspiration if you remember from the joker gang from batman beyond and we see them robbing a couple of places and then barry encounters them later on and he takes them out pretty easily it established early on in this episode that barry had very much leveled up as his powers had increased and this was another sequence where i thought they were really saving the budget previous seasons this encounter would have lasted a lot longer we would have got far more in terms of the effects and the choreography but barry takes him down very easily so it was kind of a so what sequence they're all flushed down there was really nothing to them overall so at this stage as i mentioned before it just feels like a routine flash episode nothing bad but nothing too special and actually for me the worst part was actually despero himself where we see him for the first time he shows up at the tech con event and he takes on Barry he transforms into his alien form and I've got to say the effects were not good on this again I'm not sure how much budget was put into this early episode 
But yeah, it just wasn't convincing. He had just very much of this rubbery feel about him, very similar to what we saw from the Grundy effect in Stargirl. And it just didn't look convincing. I didn't like the design. I didn't really like the colour. I know in the original comics and also the Justice League Unlimited, the tone of the character is far more of a purple contrast, but it just didn't look right. It didn't move very well. It didn't seem that convincing to me, and I think it took a lot of attention away from the encounters that he had with Barry. So he takes Barry on for the first time, and again, this is very a very short encounter overall. He tells him about the future vision, and then when they later on back at Star Labs, they decide the fact that they have to somehow find Despero's weakness because he's an alien just like they did with the Kryptonians and that Kryptonite is their weakness now for me this is a very weak way of trying to integrate Alex into the show as we all know Charlie Lee who plays her in Supergirl will be appearing in this crossover event as her sentinel alter ego and I question this because really if you want to find out about Despero his history and his overall weakness then surely you would contact John John Jones the man the Martian Manhunter from Supergirl, why would you contact Alex? She hasn't got any superpowers really, so it would be far better to contact John. And again, this throws up the ever-growing dilemma in terms of having all of the heroes on one planet, one Earth, particularly if you're talking about how Supergirl finale ended, where essentially the likes of John and Supergirl are all still there on the same Earth. So they're going to have to do some explaining as to why exactly they would try to contact Alex and not Kara or John Jones. But again, they may establish that later on throughout this crossover. And then we come to the end part of the episode where Despero shows up at Stars Labs. Again, the effects for me were very wonky. He essentially talks to Barry about how he feels he's the threat. And Barry says, no, give me a chance. You don't know who I really am or my true nature. And then Despero decides to give Barry seven days to fix what's going on. Now, I think this is a bad narrative because you're essentially undercutting the threat of Despero. Because if you think about this, if you feel that Barry is truly responsible for the dystopian future that you're in now then surely you would take him out regardless of what Barry speaks to you about regardless of how you feel about him in this current present day world if that's your ultimate goal to preserve your future then you've got to do whatever you can so surely just take him out and then job done why are you giving him seven days you know it didn't really make any sense again we may get further context as we go further on within this crossover but I just think it really undercut all of Despero's threat levels throughout this crossover because if you think about it how can he really be a villain because first of all his motivation is pretty much a sound one all he wants to do is preserve his future reality so straight away that doesn't make him a villainous character and then the fact that he wants to give Barry opportunity to try and fix this himself makes him even less of a fit in this character so I just think again the threat level of Despero wasn't there along with the fact that the CGI rendition wasn't very good so for me so far it's pretty much disappointing if you're going to make Despero the vocal antagonist throughout this crossover we're going to get a lot of twists and turns so I'm going to give them a bit of leeway and surely this will feel more like a crossover once we see the likes of Batwoman and Black Lightning appear throughout the show as well so so far in terms of episode not bad but in terms of a premiere episode not really that special it felt pretty much like a routine episode of The Flash and also as a crossover event because that's what you've sold this event on it's a five episode crossover armageddon it really didn't feel that stand out or that special overall so it kind of felt a bit flat in terms of a crossover event if you go back through previous crossovers again the best standard was that crisis on earth x and you look how spectacular that first episode was particularly when we had the church sequence right so that's the standard i'm holding it to in terms of how big a crossover event should be you know if we're at the stage where you're saying well we can do these crossover events but it has to be far more on a lower level because of budget constraints then for me why do the crossover event as at all why not just keep it to the flash and just concentrate more on making it a far more bigger opening for the flash season itself rather than a crossover because this didn't feel like a crossover event to me so far from what i saw from the opening episode but as i mentioned before it may develop into something far more explosive and special as we go on throughout the rest of the remaining episodes so those are my thoughts and feelings on the flash season 8 premiere episode and also the first part of the five part event of the armageddon crossover let me know what you think in the comments below how do you think it compares to previous crossovers are you more excited about this episode are you less excited about this episode let me know what you think in the overall comments as well when we come to the end of this five part crossover i may do an overall summary of what i feel of the event as a whole and also 
as with usual with these reviews, if there are any standout episodes throughout the rest of season 8, I will do a review for those as well. And also I will do a review for the finale episode and also the season 8 as a whole. So look out for those reviews within the channel as well. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves, stay at safe distances, and I will see you very, very soon.